William Vang is with us. So is uh, Daniel, Nicholas, Dawson, Reagan, Braxton, Taylor, Bryce, William, and Nathan. We got a good, we got a good class. Well, it's time to get started. And don't forget Mohammed, he's important too. I think I mentioned Dawson, Daniel and Braxton. We've got a good class and it's uh, time for Thermo, Thursday, December 3rd. Okay. Now I was looking at uh, your homework. I'm trying to figure out your homework and I'm a little confused. And if I'm confused, I bet you are too. But most of you turned in what I think is homework number 25. And I have grades for you for that. And that was problem uh, 9106E. I'm not sure, but it might have been a diesel cycle. Let, let me look and see. No, it was a Rankin cycle. 9106E was a Rankin cycle. And I have, most of you have turned that in. And you have grades in the grade book. Yeah. And then, uh, then there's problem, homework problem, Number 26, homework assignment 26. I wonder if we did that. See, I'm kind of confused here. That was a refrigeration cycle. And I don't know. I'm all confused about your uh, homework right now. But I'll work on it. Uh, tr try to obey the syllabus, do whatever it says uh, on the uh, Blackboard assignment list there. But I thought homework 26 was 965. And I don't yeah. have very many. Which one's correct? I don't have very many uh, submissions. Uh, Mr. Griffin? Yes. I think the problem that happens is you miss I think your ID, your ID person got to upload the option for the one. Right. That's the other thing. So two times three is what? Uh, Mohammed, say that again, please. Okay. So I was saying. Sorry. The ID person, uh, I think he forgot. He missed one of our homework to upload that homework. That's okay. why we have trouble in our homework. Oh, okay. You There's forgot to upload the homework 24, I guess, and we jumped from 24 to 25. So you, we all are missing the homework 24, I guess. Okay. Well, listen, if it's my mistake, I'll pay for it, okay? I don't want you guys to have to pay uh, for my mistakes. I've because an our, because in our student grades, if you if you if we see our student grade list, we do not have any section for homework number twenty four. From twenty three, we jump to twenty five, and that's why we have our all the problems 
which were due for 24 problem homework, we submit on 25 homework. Okay. It's it's all it's, yeah, it's all, all up and down homework. now. Yeah. It's all felt. I have an awful lot of homework grades. If if there's any doubt, you get an automatic four, Mohammed. That's how we'll do it. Today's our last day together. And uh, let me worry about that homework and I'll try not to penalize you because and of also, uh, and also go ahead. For, and also for like uh, the, the last two homework, we do not uh, have like a section available yet for on the blackboard to submit those last two homework. It's about the diesel cycle and the sterling cycle homework. So these are the last two homework we're left. Uh, hang on, somebody. Somebody's calling me. Hello. Oh, fine. Yes. Okay. Uh, I will uh, check with the higher ups and report back to you at four nine two four eight two two. Okay, thanks. Bye. Sorry, students. Uh, we need to get our class going here. I wanted to do a. Uh, I wanted to do a, um, a Sterling cycle. And in English. And here's what here's what we're going to do. I haven't figured out the uh, the foul up in the homework, but I'll try not to penalize you guys for that. We're going to have we're going to have a Sterling cycle. You do have a final coming up. And that, that final will be uh, available to you a week from today. And it's due on Sunday night. Finals week is next week. But we have a sterling cycle that we're going to do together now. And, and Here's the thing, it starts off at 14.7 PSI and 80 Fahrenheit before compression. And then it goes through compression. It has a compression ratio of six. So that means V1 over V2 is equal to six. The maximum temperature on the Stirling cycle is 2000 Fahrenheit. So let's do it together. We're gonna to do it together. Well, what we need is the uh, PV diagram. Now we're dealing with air, so, so we don't want a vapor dump. We just want some isotherms. So let me draw those. And you know that Stirling cycles have two isotherms and the, we have an isothermal compression that goes from here up to here. See, it starts off at 14 PSI, 14.7 PSI. It goes to state two, and then it has an isochore to state three, and then it has an isotherm to state four, and then it has an isochore from four to one. 
So, so there's our Stirling cycle, two isotherms and two isocores. Okay, and we've got our pressure at one, and this temperature here is 80 Fahrenheit, and this temperature here is 2000 Fahrenheit. Let's go ahead and get Rankin. Roughly, you just add 460. So I can do that in my head. This will be 2,460 Rankin, and this will be 540. So we got Rankin. <clears throat> do we know anything else? Well, not much. That's about it. But we do know this. P1 V1 is equal to RT1. And we know P1. And we know T1. Here, I'll write them out for you. This is 14.7 PSI. Now, R is uh, 5334 foot pounds per pound mass Rankin. And the temperature is 540 Rankin. So I'm going to shut up for a minute. We have a lovely equation with only one unknown. I want you to solve. I want you to solve for V V1. I'll be quiet. Go for it. Well, I did that and I got uh, 13.6 cubic feet per pound mass. If you got that, say, uh, say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's one. If you need me to write it out, I'll be glad to. If you didn't get that, it's probably because you forgot the 144 that has to go right here. You got to put a 144 in there or it doesn't work. But just say, write it out, Mr. Griffin, and I'll write it out if you need me to. Well, let's make the uh, let's make the property table. Here we go. We'll make a property table and we'll fill it in. Well, we're off to a good start. We already know P1 is 14.7. And V1 is 13.6. And T1 is uh, 540.
Now, delta u going from one to two is zero because it's an isotherm. And internal energy depends on temperature. If the temperature doesn't change, the internal energy doesn't change. Now, if your compression ratio is six, we can get V2 because we know what V1 is and V1 divided by V2 is six. So we can get V2, here goes, I'm gonna do it now. I'm getting 2.26, maybe eight. There you go, there's a one here. So we've got V2. We also know what V3 and V4 are because of the isocores. See, V3 V is 2.268 also, and V4 is 13.61, just like V1 is. Now we know what the temperatures are. T2 is 540. And T3 and T4 are the same. They're, t they're 2460. And I'm going to shut up a minute. And I'm going to let you guys get the pressures <clears throat> at 2, 3, and 4. Right now, right now we're trying to fill in the pressures at state two, three, and four. See, P2V2 is equal to RT2. And we know T2, we know R, and we know V2. You ought to be able to get P2. Go for it. Well, let me call on somebody. We need P2 and P3 and P4. So we'll call on somebody. Uh, how about my friend Braxton? Unmute and say hi to me, Braxton, please. Hello. Hey, do you have any of these empty uh, blanks here for us, Bla Braxton? Yeah, I think I got all three. Okay, go for it. Uh, for two to three, I got 88.19. That's what I got. Uh, three, to three to four, I got 401.77. Okay, now, now uh, Braxton, that, that is not, what, what these are is the initial pressure at state two. Uh, the pressure is not something that you report for a process. 
pressure is a property. It exists at a given state. It's state two, it's 88. It's state three, it's 401. I, I just didn't like the way you said that. You said, mm -hmm. yeah, you understand. Okay, what's yeah, the yeah. for uh, the pressure at uh, state four? 66.95. That's what I got. I'll just round it off. Hey, we did great. Now we're going to get the change in specific internal energy. And the way you do that is, well, we need, we need to look up C sub V. I think it's uh, 0.717 from memory. And we need the change in temperature. Now, now here, here uh, Braxton, here we are doing a process. That delta U is the change in specific internal energy for the process from one to two. And here, it'll be delta U for the process from two to three, and three to four and four to one. So those things are dealing with the process. These things are properties that only exist at an instant of time. There's another zero right here, by the way, because there's no change in internal energy on that isotherm from three to four. Okay, we need, we need to go from two to three. And that what's the change in temperature from two to three? Hmm, I don't know. It's 2460 minus 540, whatever that is. Okay, do that and we'll get our delta U from two to three. Go ahead, plug that in. Let's see what we get. I wonder if I'm doing this right. Okay, I'm doing something wrong here. Ah, oh, here's what here's what's wrong, guys. This I apologize for this. This is not right. It's point one seven one. I gave you the wrong number here. We should have looked it up, but it wasn't what I had. You know what I gave you? I gave you the uh, metric one. There is one that goes like that, but that what that is is uh, kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. We're not doing metric, we're doing English and it's 0.171. I got them mixed up, didn't I? Okay. Help me now. Let's let's get these delta U's. And we'll get them right this time. Hey, I've got a value for delta U right here. Let me call on somebody. Daniel, unmute and say hello to me, Daniel. Hello. Daniel, did you get the uh, change in internal and in specific internal energy from two to three? 
Uh, not yet. I'm still working on it. Uh, take your time. It's you have to solve. You have to solve this right here. I had the wrong number in there a while ago. Well, uh, I've got my answer. I think it's 328.3 BTUs per pound mass. If you got that, say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that's right. Now going from four to one, I think that's gonna be a minus 328.3. Cause you got the same, everything's the same except the temperatures are reversed. Instead of getting hotter, you're getting colder. Okay. Now, does anyone have any suggestions about all these eight boxes here that are empty. Two of those are zero. Does anybody know which boxes are zero over here? Um, four to three and four to one work will be zero. Four to one. What about four to one, Mohammed? Four to one is zero and two to three work will be zero. Yeah, the work is zero. Four to one and Two to three, there is no work because it's a uh, ISO core. The piston doesn't move. The piston doesn't move from two to three. The volume doesn't change, so the piston doesn't move. However, it's getting hotter because you're inputting some heat en energy right here. Call this little Q23. We need to figure out what that is. Hey, we could figure that out. Let's write the uh, first law. Make some room here. We'll write the first law and we'll figure that out. Now the first law, we're dealing with a control mass. And the first law says, and the thing is, we know the delta U when you go from one to two, and we know the work. Hey, we can solve for Q. It's either going to be plus or minus 328.3, but is it uh, plus or minus? We'll ask somebody. Hey, Bryce, Bryce, unmute and say hello to me, please, Bryce. Hello. Bryce, there's some heat transfer here going from state two to state three, and it's going into the system. The system in this case is air. You're making the air hotter. So is that a plus or a minus? Heat transfer per mass. Which is it? Uh, uh, plus. Right. Plus. He's going to go with plus, and he's got it right. Good going, Bryce. And it's BTUs per pound mass. It's positive. It's going in. Heat transfer going in is positive. Now here, you're going to get a heat transfer going out. What that is, is Q41. Well, we could get that too. Hey, look, wouldn't it just be the minus 
from the first law. Yeah, I think so. Well, we got four boxes here. Any uh, suggestions on how we're going to fill in those four boxes? Um, what about for the uh, isotherms? We yeah. Could use, we could use the uh, work is equal to P1, V1, LN over V2, V1. Boy, boy, you. That's it. Now, who was I just talking to? That was Bryce. Bryce is absolutely right. We have a lovely equation for an ideal gas isotherm. And it goes like this. One to two is an ideal gas isotherm. And it goes like this. The work per mass from going from state one to state two, P1, V1, natural log of V2 over V1. Okay, well, let's write that stuff out and see, we'll get that. Well, what's P1? Uh, that's 14, I'll write it out. That's 14.7 pounds force per square inch. V1 is 13.61 cubic feet per pound mass. V2 over V1, instead of me writing it all out, couldn't I just say 1 sixth? We know it's 1 sixth. See, V1 over V2 is 6, so V2 over V1 is 1 sixth. Ah, but there's a problem with the units. See these inches squared and these feet squared? Here's what you have to do. You have to go 144 inches squared is a square foot. And that's going to give you get rid of some of the feet and you'll have a foot pound. And then to get BTUs, you're going to have to do this. You're going to have to multiply by BTU is 778 foot pounds of force. This will give you your work per mass going from one to two. Go ahead and get that and we'll put it in. Go ahead. Hey, Chase, unmute and say hello to me, Chase, please. Uh, Earth calling Chase. Earth calling Chase, come in, Chase. Uh-oh, coffee break. Uh. Nicholas Sabrata, Nicholas Sabrata, unmute and say hello to me, please, Nicholas. Hello. Hey, Nicholas, have you figured out this little W, this work per mass going from state one to state two? Have you figured it out yet? Yes, sir. What'd you get? I got negative 66.35. That's what I got. I got negative 66.35. Five <clears throat> BTUs <clears throat> per pound mass. Good going. Hey, now, now we can get the heat transfer going from one to two. Uh, yeah, from one to one to one to two. Now there is a heat transfer here too. I didn't draw it, 
but going from one to two, there's going to be a heat transfer. And from the first law, you can use this equation here. So you know this is zero. We're trying to find Q12. Now the work is negative 66.35. So if you solve that, what do you get for the heat transfer from one to two? I tell you what, it's either plus or minus 66. 0.35. But back to Nicholas Sabrata. Nicholas, is it plus or minus? Plus or minus on this heat transfer from one to two. You've got a 50 50 chance of getting this right, Nicholas. Do I put a plus there or do I put a minus there? Minus, sir. Good going. Because see, it's it's transferring out. The heat the heat is there's a heat transfer out. Now there's going to be a heat transfer in here. This is Q three four. Uh, how are we going to get that? Well, how about the same way? Why don't we do it the same way? It's just that we're going to be doing the work per mass from three to four. And you'll have P3, V3, natural log of V4 over V3, which is just six. You just put a six in there. See, V1 over V2 is equal to V4 over V3. They're the same. Okay, well, let's see. We've got... Uh, P, but wait a minute, P3 is not 14.7 anymore. It's 401, isn't it? It's 401. And uh, V3, it's not 13.61 anymore. It's 2.2. And this is not one sixth anymore, it's six. Now this is gonna give you the work per mass going from three to four. If you plug all that in, you should get it. Go for it, plug it in, let's see what happens. Well, I got an answer. When, when I plugged all this in, I got 301.6. Anybody get 301.6? If you did, say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, there we go. And, and once you get that, I'll shut up and let you finish. Some of you are still plugging and, plugging and chugging. Now, once you get that, you should be able to get the, the heat transfer from three to four. Same equation. Here it is. First law. Let's just put in our amounts here. From three to four, we have a zero. And we're going to solve for the heat transfer. And the work is a positive 301.6. So when you solve for the heat transfer from uh, three to four, I get a positive 301.6. Hey, we filled in all our boxes. Great. Let's add these up and see what the uh, totals are. <clears throat> 
these two cancel out. You can see you get the same totals. Let's see what it is. This is 235.3. And when you add these up, guess what? That's supposed to say uh, that cancels. That's supposed to say 235.3, does it? Let, let me see. I'm going to plug it in and see. Yeah, it rounds off to 235.3 if you round it off. And you know what this is? This is your network. And you know what this is? This is your net heat transfer, well, per mass. In a cycle, those have to be the same. The first law says so. Let's get the efficiency now. If you have a regenerator, they take this heat transfer, this 4.1, what is it, the 328.3, they put it in the regenerator. And they put it back in here and you don't have to pay for it. It's, it's free. It's free. And so if you have a regenerator, we can find the efficiency of this Stirling cycle. Here it goes. It's the network divided by uh, the heat transfer that you have to pay for. Well, if you don't have, th these here cancel out. So uh, th this is what you have to pay for from three to four. This 66 here from one to two, that's just heating up Oklahoma. So you, you got a network of 235.3 and a heat transfer that you have to pay, pay good money for of 301.6. Okay, do that. And what, what this is, is with the regenerator. All right, go for it. Did you get 78% efficiency for this Carnot cycle? Uh -huh. Yeah. Now I'll show you something interesting. I think I told you this before. If you have a Carnot cycle, and we've done those, we've done Carnot cycles. And they, they are the most efficient. Don't, the only trouble with Carnot cycles is they don't exist. That is a problem. But they do have Stirling engines. But the efficiency of a Carnot cycle, the theoretical efficiency is given by this equation here. Well, let's plug it in and see. And you have to use absolute temperatures. So you have to use the 540 and the 2460. Go ahead and plug that in and let's see what you would get if you had a Carnot cycle. Boy, 
point you, you get 78%. That's one of the nice things about Stirling cycles. They give you the same theoretical efficiency of the most efficient engine from theory. Now in real life, a Carnot cycle is going to have some irreversibilities like friction, for instance, and you won't get such a high efficiency. Now let's figure the efficiency without a regenerator. Let me make a little room here someplace. How about right here? This will work. And we're going to make a, uh, we're going to find the efficiency without a regenerator. Well, you still get the same net work, 235.3. But now you have to pay for both of these. See, see these two heat transfers? You got to pay for both of them. You don't have a regenerator anymore. So you don't get this free anymore. You got to pay for it. Okay. Well, that'd be 238.3 plus the 301.6. And that will give you your. Uh, efficiency without the regenerator. It won't be so good. Professor? Yes. In the denominator, that first term, is it 328 or 338.? Gosh, 328. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I did it wrong. It's, it's 320. I, I got a little problem with dyslexia here. Now, now who was I just talking to? Uh, that was would it was, was Bryce. 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 <laughs> yes, Is there? Bryce, honk and thank you point for Bryce. Appreciate your help. Uh, by the way, Bryce, have you ever heard of dyslexia? I have, yes. They say that one out of 10 people have it to some extent. When Bryce, I did some... Bryce, do you mean... Do you mean you've heard of it, Bryce, or or I have, I have? <laughs> well, if, if you have it, you're in good company. Uh, Einstein had it. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, yeah. People, you can still function with it pretty good. I mean, Einstein functioned pretty good, don't you think? Well, sadly. Okay, here, sad go ahead. I'm plugging this in now and see what I get here. Well, it's much less. I'm getting 37%. That's if you don't have a, uh, a uh, regenerator. But believe it or not, some of the early uh, Sterling engines had regenerators. OK, now let's see how good you guys are at drawing uh, TS diagrams. I'm going to. Make a little room here. <clears throat> and we're going to make a TS diagram. You know it's air. And, and we know everything. We know all the pressures and temperatures. We don't know the entropies. That, that's true. We don't know those. But we do know something about them. We do know if you had some adiabats. We don't, though. See, the adiabats are coming in here at a higher angle. Adiabats are more like that. But I'm going to shut up, and I'm going to see if you can draw the cycle. See if you can. Draw the cycle on a TS diagram. And while you're at it, try try to label anything you can. <clears throat> Go ahead. I'll be quiet for a minute and a half or whatever. See what you can do.
What we're doing right now, if, if you just woke up from a daydream, we've done a Stirling cycle and we have it on a PV diagram. And we're trying to draw the cycle on a TS diagram. I'll give you another little bit of time there and we'll, we'll see how we did. Well, I hope you tried to get started on that, but let's go ahead and show you what we think here. I feel like I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, now uh, we're going to put 2000 Fahrenheit right here and just draw a straight line. There you go. There's your 2000 Fahrenheit. And then the 80 Fahrenheit's down here a lot colder. There's your 80 Fahrenheit. So far, so good. Now, uh, what about state one? Well, it's at low pressure, isn't it? 14.7. Did you know the pressure, the isobars kind of go like that? So this could be state one. Uh, now, wait a minute, now let me, I'm getting mixed up now. Uh, <clears throat> I know isobars go like that, and we don't have any isobars. Uh, isobars kind of go like that. And th these are the big ones, and these are the small ones. I think this would be more like state one here. Uh, now, state two has got, what, eight, 88? We can make this 14.7 and make this 88.2 PSI, PSI. But uh, the, the temperature stays the same from one to one to two, you yeah. know? Well, that looks pretty good. How about that? From one to two. Okay. Then what? From two to three. Now, now isocores, they're not as steep as isobars. They kind of go, you know, I'll do them in a different color. Let me get let me get some green here. Isocores kind of go like this. So we're going from one to two. Uh, here would be two to three. There's state three. Then what? Uh, well, we follow an isotherm again. We follow an isotherm to uh, 401. Well, where's 401? Uh, now, just a second now. Guys, I'm getting all mixed up. Let, let me look at my book here. Your state three might be on the side of twos. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Pressure. State, state three state will be... It'll it be 2,000 three? Fahrenheit, right? It is at one, though. And right now you have between... 87 and 14.7. Uh, so, yeah, but it is 401 pressure. 
Okay, 14.7, yeah, and 540 Rankin, well, that's 80 Fahrenheit. I think one is okay. Let me look at this up just a minute. I wanna, I wanna find it in the book here. I'm having trouble, so uh, if you had trouble, don't feel like the Lone Ranger. Uh, where in the heck is this stuff anyway? I got lost. It's chapter, is it chapter 10? Let's see if I can find it here. Yeah, here we go. I'm getting warm now. We need, we need the Sterling cycle. Yeah, there we go. <clears throat> hey, we did good on one to two. Look at there. Uh, and then I think of what I told you is right. Your, your, your isochores kind of go like that to three. So it's state three, what do we have? The 2000 Fahrenheit, that's pretty good. And then what? A constant uh, temperature, right? To what? Um, a higher pressure? I think I think I got I think I got these wrong. Uh, okay, now just a second here. I like one to two. I think I did that right. Two two to three, and they said three to four goes like this. Let me, let me get rid of that isobar. I, th I think that's causing me a lot of grief there. Three to four goes over here like this. And then four back to one is the isochore. What happened to my green? Oh, gee, there it is. That's an isochore. And that isochore there from uh, four to one is at uh, 13.61 cubic feet per pound mass. This isochore here is uh, 2.268 cubic feet per pound mass. See, the isochores get smaller as you come out this way. They get bigger going that way. But, but the... Uh, Isobars do the opposite. Now, uh, at state two, the isobar is 88. So here we go. Here's your, here's your 88. There's your 88.2 PSI. And here at state one, it's 14.7. And there, there's your 14.7. PSI. It's getting kind of messy. Well, I had it there. There it is. Uh, the isobars get smaller going this way, but the isochores uh, get bigger going this way. See, two is here, 13 is bigger than two. The isochores get bigger going this way, but the isobars, that's 88, this is 14.7, they get smaller going this way. Well, there you have it. You've got your temperatures. You've got your uh, isochores. And I got a question. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Should three be further to the left because it's 401 PSI, which is a lot more than 88.2? Okay, now wait a minute. Three, three is 401. Uh, that's right, isn't it? Gosh, yeah, that's... I see. Of course, I that's an intelligent problem. question. Three, three, three should be uh, three should be four oh one. But the picture on page three twenty does look like your TS diagram. I just don't understand how it doesn't follow. Yeah. I don't understand point three it seems to be less than eighty eight point two, but it's actually four oh one. Okay, now hang on. Let me think about this. <clears throat> 
what what I need to know is what's the what is the pressure at state four? It's thirteen point six one, right? No, no, that's no, it's sixty seven. This pressure is sixty seven. Uh, okay, okay. What is the pressure at state three? It's four oh one. What's the pressure at state two? 88. Uh, the pressure at state three is 401. So, uh, okay. We'll get it right. <laughs> Gosh, it's getting so messy. Uh, let me get these pressures out of here. I, I like my uh, isocores and my isotherms. I think we got those right. But now for the pressures. Now, now who was it that was just telling me that, that, that had that very good comment just a minute ago? Who was that? They said, said the four. Uh, four Braxton and Bryce. Braxton and Bryce, B and B. B and B have a, a good comment there. All right, uh, now let me think about this. There, there is a nice chart in your book. If you will look on page uh, appendix E. Uh, that's not for an ideal gas, so that's for water. Never mind. Uh, never mind. That's for water. Never, never mind. All right, now let me think about my pressures. Uh, <clears throat> what is the highest pressure on here? That's the 401, right? That's the highest pressure. And then what is the lowest pressure? The 14.7. Okay. Guys, I'm totally confused right now. I think I think I see. Well, I I might have answered my own question. Well, we'll answer um, it for me. <laughs> um, I think twos, the end of two, actually, um, uh, the the pressure of two, that isobar actually slopes um, beyond point three to the right of point three. I so think you're actually, right. I think it goes up way. here, doesn't it? Yeah, they're just okay. more. Uh, Let's try along that. Along the yeah, adiabatic type of line. Okay, and now so uh, two was two was eighty-eight. So we're, we're we're saying this is eighty-eight point two psi. Correct, and that also applies to point one um, and four. So point one ends to the right. Of point four. For whatever reason, my mind was not letting me. I was how about, we, how those, about we do this and we make that the 14.7 psi? Correct. That, yes. Now, this one here, uh, that's, that's state four. What's state four? That's the state 67. Is it's 67, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, 67 is between 14 and 88. I kind of like it. Yes. Six, 67. Now, who am I talking to? Is this Bryce again? Yes, sir. Bryce, I'm going to put a little happy face up here in the corner. I think 67 is between 14 and 88. But now, where's the 401? Well, that's way the heck up here, isn't it? It is, uh, yeah. Well, it got kind of messy, but we I think we finally figured it out. Well, let me show you one more thing. We had fun with that. You guys make me think, and that, that hurts. It hurts to think. 
but it's good for me. I had an eraser around here someplace. Oh, gee. Trying to find my eraser. Yeah, here it is. <clears throat> I want to show you how this Sterling engine works. We got some room here. I'm going to have to sacrifice some of this so that we can show you how the Sterling engine works. They have a they have a piston. They have a piston that's connected to a, a crankshaft. Now, if, if the crankshaft is rotating this way, can you see that that piston will be moving this way? The piston will be moving this way and the volume will be getting smaller. The volume will be getting smaller. Like going from one to two, one was, remember, a big volume. And we followed the isotherm, we went to two. And the volume got small. So, so this crank, it's sort of like a crankshaft. It, it's cranking away here. And this piston's going this way and the volume's getting smaller. And then <clears throat> what happens is when it gets to here someplace, maybe not that far, maybe to here, then, then the, uh, this flywheel or crankshaft is like that, yeah, and, it, and, it's, and it's turning, and it's gonna go some more, and you can see that. And so we're going from one to two, the volume's getting smaller, but we need to make it hotter. Now, what they did was they put, they put the fire right here. I put, put some red flames right here. <clears throat> And then they put a colder region right in here. Now, what that amounts to is really like fins, like they put on a motorcycle or a Volkswagen engine. You know, the Volkswagen engine doesn't have a coolant. It just has these fins that, uh, that radiate the heat and try to keep it cool. And it's really clever. They, they have something inside here called a displacer. This is called a displacer. And when the displacer goes this way, can you see the air inside will be forced around and will have to go in the region where the fire is and it'll get hotter. And when that happens, you're at the place where this thing is turning over and the volume will get bigger and the volume will, it'll be down here now. And the volume's getting bigger because the displacer has moved this way, forcing the air where, where the, hot, the hot part is, and it expands and it pushes the piston this way. Of course, this thing is turning and it has inertia and it will eventually get to the uh, limit here and it will be here now. This thing's turning and you'll have the maximum volume. But now this displacer that's inside, it goes this way. That forces the air inside around the displacer and it forces the air over the cooler region. See, it's cooler here. Well, that contracts, and so that makes the piston want to make the volume smaller. And so it's turning this way now, and you're back to where you kind of got started there, remember, where we were like this, and the piston's going this way. The uh, displacer in here is 90 degrees out of sync with the uh, this what I call this crankshaft here. 
it's really not a crankshaft because the power comes from the hot heating and cooling of this piston and that air can heat and cool uh, oh, 50 times a second with no problem. Air can do that. So this thing's going back and forth because the temperature is getting hotter and colder 50 times a second. It's expanding and contracting all because of this displacer, which is connected to, to this inertial wheel here. If any of that made a lick of sense, of course, this is where this is where you get your power from. This is your it's driving this. This piston drives this thing, and you've got yourself. You could connect that to to, to some kind of pump, let's say, to pump water. And it's just really clever the way they've connected that displacer to, to this um, what I call the crankshaft. That's how it was invented and it is, is still basically like that, but they've improved it. What they've done is uh, they've, they've had a separate, they, they, have the working, they have the working piston here and then they have a second, a, a second container for, for the displacer, but they're all connected there's a tube here that connects the air uh, how am I going to draw that yeah I think it's like that you don't need you don't need this here because the, the piston is flush with the side here there you go this needs to go in here any anywhere in here would be fine yeah Actually, I think it's going to have to go in here someplace. Uh, put it in here. Yeah, that's better. And, and here's here's where they have the hot and the cold. And they're shuttling this displacer back and forth. And you have your fire here and your cold air here. <clears throat> and it makes the piston go back and forth. <clears throat> Well, that it's pretty simple. There's no uh, there's no wiring, no spark plugs, and no pollution. It's a Sterling engine. Well, guys, we've studied uh, a lot of different cycles. I don't know about your homework. I might have to just uh, figure it out the best way I can, but it it got fouled up like. I think Mohammed was telling me. I'll figure it out. So can can we email you that? You can email me homework. Yes, you can. Oh, it's not gonna be open on Blackboard. Anything? I don't know. Well, look look on Blackboard and see see what it says. So the, because the due date is tomorrow. Yeah. Let, let me just see here. Let me look on this. We, I've got records for you for homework through homework 26. We also had a 27 and 28. As far as I'm concerned, you can omit homework 27 and 28 and see if you can see if you can turn in the, the rest either by well by email if you have to and I'll, and I'll put some grades in the grade book okay now when when is your final uh, we told you I Only forgot. 14. It's uh, it Sunday is the on the thirteenth. Yeah, it's it's available on the tenth, right? Yes. Yeah, available on the tenth. Due on the thirteenth. 
I think that'll work. Yeah, well, when is the 10th? Next, next Thursday, today's uh, Thursday, a week from today, your finals available. Do it, turn it in, we'll grade it. We'll give you a semester grade. And thanks for taking the class and we'll see you around students. Thank is you. This our, is yeah. this our last class? This is our last class. Um, this is it. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, we learned something. That's good. And you're going to go, you're gonna go on to OSU or someplace. You're going to be fine. I have a question before we leave, Mr. Sure, Griffin. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, are, you, are you going to update, update it? I, I mean, the blackboard? Because I need to. It's like those five coins you gave us last time for. The number one exercise, number yeah, one did, a question. Yeah, the did, did, did you turn that in? Yes, I did, but the black ball point I don't have not it. upgrade. I, I, I've got it written down, but I didn't put it on blackboard. I need to do that, but I won't forget you. I will okay, I will that. add those five points. I will. Okay, so well, bye bye, question. student. Uh, Mr. Griffin? Yes. So we are not doing the last two homeworks of the thermodynamics, no, right? Because it's just all fouled up, Mohammed. Okay. Just, um, I have a question for the strength of strength of material class homework. Go ahead. So um, on the last homework on the schedule, it says the homework problem due are 13, three and nine. But on the blackboard, it says it's 13, three and 13, seven. So which one we are doing, the seven or nine? Um, I think the seven. The seven? Yeah. Okay, because it's the, yeah. on the schedule, it was 39. So that's why I was confused which one we are doing then. Yeah, just do, just do the one. It's okay. Okay. Right. Okay, guys. Adios for now. I'll see you around. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.